Uh huh. He Lake Chapala, Mexico. Is it the paradise you hear about, or is it overrated? We're gonna help you answer that question in this video. We've just spent two months in Ahahi, Lake Chapala, Mexico, and we can give you some feedback based on that experience. Mm -hmm. First off, maybe we'll start with the weather. You hear all the time that how the weather is ideal here. It's the perfect climate year round. And for the most part, I would agree with that. It has been very pleasant here the majority of the time. We haven't needed heat or air conditioning. Mm -hmm. I will yeah. say the two months that we're staying here is uh, March and April. And we're coming to the end of April now and the heat has just ratcheted up like considerably. So it was 26 to 28 most of the time. Yeah. This week it's 32 to 33. Yeah. And we've gone from barely going into the pool at all to <laughs> lingering in the pool, sitting in the pool multiple <laughs> times a day. Yep. and multiple cold showers so yeah if you hear online or on youtube videos that the climate here is ideal year round you might want to look a little deeper into that one but if i could add to it i think year round it's more livable year round than a lot of places in mexico because think about the places Fair. we've lived puerto vallarta cancun different places on the coast puerto escondido was our one of our favorites Ooh. A lizard or something. Sorry, we just scared a guy. Avocado tree right here. It's kind of cool. So some of the coastal places we've lived in is not inhabitable almost all year round. Like you get you get the winter months that are pretty darn hot. Then once summer comes, um, let's say April to August, September, downright hot. Can't live, can't even think, no work during the day. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I would That's say true. ahihi and Chapala and Hokotepec area along the lake is more more in more habitable all year round. Mm. Okay. Would you say? Yeah, I totally agree. Some of those coastal areas that we've stayed long term in, I mean without AC, you're useless during the whole day. Yeah. <sighs> if we sound winded, it's because we are. <laughs> our little neighborhood here, our fraccionamiento is on a hill built from the lake into the nearby mountainside and so we're just taking you around as we talk to you about the area mm -hmm. and it's a pretty steep incline at the moment no i'm not sure <laughs> you might be able to see a sliver of the lake in the background over our shoulders so maybe yeah. let's talk about the lake a little bit if you get far enough away from the lake i guess you could say it's picturesque and adds to the view once you get close to it though it's mm -hmm. pretty green it's right now anyway they say it's because of a drought but it's way down in its uh, water levels somebody said recently it was at 42 percent and that's like for the last three years it's been going down and down so we're just catching it at its currently uh lowest for below 42 percent full yeah they say it's because of a drought but you know when you look at the amount of agriculture that's all around the lake here yeah i wonder if it's just drought and everyone and their dog knows that Guadalajara also pulls from this lake for their drinking water, which is flabbergasts me because there's, I don't know, whew, four or five million people in Guadalajara. You're pulling a lot of water. That's a lot of water. I don't know if this lake's ever gonna come back up based on what I see. So. We, sh we sure hope so. We saw some um, sort of historic photos when we were touring around in the town. Oh, it was beautiful at one time. The water came right up to like docks that were in the water and now those docks are like sitting on dry stilts and it's all swampy and stinky and, and algae ridden. It's kind of sad. Yeah, it's, it's not a benefit to the area right now. It's kind of a whatever the opposite of benefit is. So it didn't, it didn't add anything for us. We just I mean, kind of avoided it. We were really looking forward to it. We're like, yeah, Mexico by a big lake. How lovely. No one ever tells you online. It's really stinky right now. Yeah. Now we should say that it, it's a very popular expat area. As you may know, if you've watched other Ahi Heat videos from some of these fluff channels that basically just show what's, Good what's about it. sweet and sexy about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, usually those people are a whole lot better looking than us, but if you want the reality of it, listen, if you're somewhere between the age of 70 and 111 and you're watching this video, <laughs> this might be a very good spot for you to just chill out, live a very simplistic, quiet lifestyle. There's not a lot to do and that might be right up your alley. If you're anywhere between, let's say, 18 and 45, you might want to give this area a pass. 
or if you're determined to come check it out on your own maybe give it a weekend a week 10 days on your way through to somewhere else yeah like for example Puerto Vallarta is only eight or nine hour drive if you're Mexican five hours actually so, way less than that the new the new highway is open all the toll roads all the way and it's four hours oh I don't know about that I paid a yeah, yeah. hundred bucks in tolls coming here and it was double four hours I know so. but there was that section that wasn't uh, open fair. blah 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 now that it's completed it might be shorter but that's that no. buenas Hola, tardes, buenas tardes. <laughs> all right what's next maybe we'll touch on you know what do we think of the friendliness of the people mm -hmm. maybe and we could maybe categorize that with locals maybe you know we would drive every day into Hokotepec and go to the gym four or five days a week so there's those local people and then there's the expat local people so uh -huh. what would you say i would say in both cases that i mean outside of going to church they're super friendly there they want to adopt you and invite you into your into their home within yeah. five minutes but in the outside world i would say overall both the locals and the expats i wouldn't categorize them as friendly uh, i would categorize them slightly to the unfriendly <laughs> side bless you excuse me to the unfriendly side compared to some of the other places that we've been like you compare yeah the people to other parts of mexico there's many places in mexico that we've stayed long term yeah. where the people are much friendlier uh compared to other countries like let's say indonesia and it's not even a comparison yeah no to be fair you know it's not like they're all crabby and nobody says hello or anything we would go into Ahihi or Hokotepec for some errands or the gym. And virtually everyone on the sidewalk, a mom with her kids or an older lady grabbing her fruits for the day or something, we would say buenos dias and they always replied. Um, with a smile too and a curiosity because Hokotepec is a not exactly touristy. I think there were four gringos in that whole town and we were two of them. Yeah. And so, um, you know, they would kind of like look us over. Buenos dias. You know, like you're a novelty, right? So there were some friendly people, but we almost always had to initiate that. Mm hmm that's true. Foods, okay, well, it depends where you are around the lake, I think. If you're nearer to the end, uh, where it's the more local town, we keep calling it Hokotepec, you know, it's local. You're gonna get your terrible pizza, your roast terrible. chicken. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, your carnitas, your tacos al pastor, and your, and your fresh fruits and vegetables. The barbacoa is really good. Yeah, we found that our last day. So generally, if you're gonna, you want to keep costs low when you buy your fruits, veggies, and meats from the local markets and prepare at home, or go out for just your taco stand. Then your costs are low, and your variety is kind of low also. Um, but we ventured in several times to Ahihi and Chapala area, at almost at the middle point of the lake, and the variety is way up. I mean, you get your first fish burgers, your shrimp tacos, your any kind of quesadillas you want. Western food. By the time you Thai get to Ahihi, food. there's a Walmart. Yeah, there's like all kinds of stuff. And so your variety goes way up. Um, the costs go way up. And we spoke mm -hmm. to quite a few locals, um, like Mexican locals. They don't really go over that direction and eat. Um, the people that eat there are expats. Um, us who needed a change from cooking at home or tacos, or tacos all the time. Every day, yeah. yeah. Or the people from Guadalajara with a few funds who come and have a second home here and they're just they're here they're here for the weekend. They're ready to spend. They don't mind getting their Thai food for thirty or forty dollars. Now thirty or forty dollars is perhaps a bargain for for the from those of us for those of us from the US or Canada. But it, you know, when you're in Mexico you sort of expect quite low prices and so thirty or forty for a dinner for two is is maybe surprising for those of you who are on a budget or looking to keep your costs really low and live cheap in mexico you know yeah so we never expected to end up in this area to be honest it was uh, sort of a last minute thing it was we had spent two months in puerto vallarta before this which was also not in the plans <laughs> that's another story you're not interested in but the important part is to summarize for you I don't think we would come back to this area anytime soon uh, just because there's not much for us to do the world's a big place <laughs> and you know even within Mexico there's a lot of places that I think we prefer yeah on that note 
I agree. We did accidentally spend two months in Puerto Vallarta before this. We didn't expect to like that either, <laughs> but maybe we did, maybe we didn't. If you're interested, we'll make another video for you like this, telling you about our experiences that we spent two months in Puerto Vallarta. All right, let's talk about the roads and how they're built. Not all of them, but many of them when you get off the highway and into the towns of Ajiji, Chantepec, Otokopec, etc. They're dominated by cobblestones. And if you've only seen photos of cobblestones, they look really art art artisan artisanal. <laughs> what? Sure, artisanal, colonial, charming. Yeah. But artsy fartsy. Artsy fartsy. The reality of it is though. <gasps> cobblestones will wreak havoc on your ankles your knees your hips mm. your vehicle yeah. they're they're a very nasty surface mm -hmm. and once you spend any amount of time around cobblestones you're like i'll go anywhere else yeah you know but cobblestones two reasons i think like we were traveling with our folks and they're they're older they're over 70 and over 80 and we were worried constantly for their ankles and misstepping and stuff and then we bought a car while we were in mexico and sold it um just to, just yesterday um sold it before we left and it it's absolutely like uh, 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 like your feelings are rattling yeah and they go for blocks and blocks and blocks endless sometimes so not the best i could i personally could not live full time and retire let's say in a community like ahihi where i'm gonna go and say 90 percent of the roads are cobblestone yeah now, yeah. if you're in that age, age range that I talked about earlier, that 70 to 170, and you are considering, oh, the, the climate here is perfect, just also keep in mind that because of the cobblestones, you may want to look for other options that don't have cobblestones because they're going to yeah. be a daily experience for you. They really are. And may I add also, on top of the cobblestones, which is really bad and a deal breaker for us anyway, Man, were the roads tight in Ahihi. Uh, really tight, you guys. Like, only enough room, just barely, for one car to get through when someone else is parked on the side. So really, really tight and really congested. I yeah. We're not singing a real happy tune about Ahihi. So you can get products and services, and then the climate might be okay for you year-round. For us, it's just a deal-breaker for the congestion and the amount of people, the amount of cars, and the tightness in that town. We're glad we checked out the area. It answered a few questions for us. Now that we have answers to those questions, the yep. motivation to come back will be pretty low. I think this area would be well down the priority list for us. Yeah. We really hope this video helped you out somewhat. If it did, go ahead and press the like button. Maybe introduce yourself in the comments. Welcome to the channel. If you're watching for the first time, welcome back if you've watched our videos before. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Feel free to follow us as we continue traveling full time around the world and then boondock for six months off grid in Canada. See you again soon in the next one. Son of a, whose idea was this? Mm -hmm. Walk and talk, they said. Yeah. It'll be fun, they it's... said. This is like straight up the mountain here. And, uh, it's also straight up my nose, I'm pretty sure. I'm considerably above my BMI, so... <laughs> <laughs>